Hello there boys and girls, long time no talk. Um, I recently got myself a, a Raspberry Pi after many months of waiting and promises it would be out in February. So I finally got it um, about two three weeks ago. Um, for those of you who don't know what a Raspberry Pi is, it's a little uh, credit sized card computer that runs Linux, has a little bit of RAM, has the HDMI and compass out, um, and it's really quite nice. So. I bought one but didn't really think about what I was going to do with it. I thought I was going to maybe do a meme, some sort of meme set up a multiple arcade machine emulator. But um, after looking into it and I thought that's far too much work, I just couldn't be bothered with all the compiling things with, with uh, that's related to Linux and everything else. So I, thought, so I decided against it. So I was looking around the internet as you do and I found a website or a blog of a guy who does uh, well different modifications and things like that and he had put his Raspberry Pi in uh, one of the earlier Commodore 64's, the, what we call the bread bin style case and um, I thought that's a good idea that actually, that sounds quite, quite a bit of fun so I thought that was a little project I could start so um, I don't have, well, I do have a bread bin Commodore 64 but I loathe the idea of butchering a, a perfectly working, good working computer so I decided against that. I do, however, <coughs> excuse me, have a a Commodore the Commodore sixty four C, which was the later model, um, which it had a it has a RAM fault, so it, it randomly resets and crashes and things like that. And I really no idea how to fix it to be honest. So I thought, well, rather than gathering dust today in the corner of the shop somewhere, I'll uh, I'll use it. Um, I haven't. Modified. This is it here. Actually, I haven't modified the case in any way. Um, things have been stuck to the case with Aldite of all things, and uh, it seems to be okay. It's not complete yet, but it does. It does run. So I'll just put the case on. Let you see that. Get on. <coughs> Excuse me again. Um, so let's stand up here. I'm being lazy today. So you can't quite see it, but that, that's the, that's the Raspberry Pi there. It's hiding under the keyboard. Uh, insulate the top it so it doesn't short anything out on the keyboard here. Um, got four port USB hub. Now the Raspberry Pi only has two USB ports so one's taken with the keyboard and the other one, well we, had to, we need at least another one for mouse so we've got four so I can plug a mouse in and memory sticks or, or whatever. Um, Compass it out and audio out so that's so I can plug into the TV as of now. These two are empty but one will be for Ethernet and the other one will be for HDMI. Uh, a more standardised, now the, the power source for the Raspberry Pi is, is the Samsung HDC style um, data connection, which isn't all that common, well it is common but it's, it's unusual for a power source from anything other than a phone, so what I decided to do was I've got a standard 5mm uh, uh, socket and then I've wired a switch to the back and that's wired straight to the Raspberry Pi, well not straight to the Raspberry Pi, I butchered a, an HTC data cable and um, wired it all up. Uh, this little fella here is what they call Akira, now Akira is a great bit of kit, what it does is it allows you to connect a Commodore keyboard to be at 64, 16 or 128 to USB so you can use it on a computer or in this case for the Raspberry Pi and it works really well. Um, and that's about it for now. I mean, the cables are a bit of a state, but once I figure out how to, oh, excuse me, um, get the uh, HDMI and Ethernet in. Now the thing was that the the guy's website that I saw, uh, he used the Redbin 64. I didn't realise at the time, but they are much bigger uh, or deeper rather than these newer ones. So even as it stands now, it's a bit of a tight squeeze. So I'm really not sure how I'm going to get these in, but that's something for another day. So what we'll do. Put this back on. We'll shut the Nintendo up and we'll see what's what. We'll fire up, let you see it. Back to V3, that's fine. So, what you do, just hit the power button in the back, lights on, and up it goes. You see, it's just detecting hardware now, so it does this every time they. Storage media is a compact flash card, not a compact flash, it's a secure digital, shut up Michael. Um, it's currently got an 8 gig one, I'm pretty sure you can use pretty much any size you like, 
but in 8 gigs is more than enough for this. Yeah, the original image for the operating system was 2, so plenty of space. So, familiar sort of desktop. Wait for it to fire up. There it goes. So, mouse works. I'll just um, see what I'm doing here. Just load up. Let's see. Obviously, I can't go on the internet yet. The Ethernet's not hooked up yet, but there's Leashpad, which is a text editor. And uh, as you can see, keyboard works absolutely fine. So yeah, bit of fun really enough. I don't really, I don't. I'm not going to do these as a a service like I do like some of the Mega Drives and things like that. It's just too much. It's not something. It's, it's a bit of crafting involved, and I'm not very good at that. In all honesty, there's there's actually if you if you look closely at the back of the case, which I'm not going to show you anyway, there's a lot of, a lot of dried arrow light everywhere. So um, it's just this is not something I'm going to do for as a service in the shop. It's just something I thought I'd do for fundies. So yeah, see you in the next video. Bye bye.